Jim, thanks so much for joining us at Fun Thanks Forum for having me. Thank you. You've been here all week. What yes. are the key conversations you've been having and the most interesting things you'll take home? I think I've got three things I'd mention. The first is, was observed by someone I met on Monday afternoon. This feels like a technology conference. So a lot about technology and disruption. Uh, secondly, I think regulation, we've been through a marathon on regulation, but uh, I was on a panel about regulation on Tuesday and uh, it was a cheerful and upbeat one whether we were talking about the opportunity. So maybe we've got a light at the end of the tunnel on regulation. And thirdly, the USITS world is holding up quite well in the current environment. I think some of that is down to the fact that third countries outside Europe are more and more using USITS funds. So I think it's seen as more of a growth opportunity than most other mutual fund industries in the world. You mentioned Europe there. What position are we in at the moment in ter terms of the geopolitical position and where Europe sits within that? Well, of course, a lot of the headlines have been around the rather bizarre events in US politics. But I would suggest that one of the real fault lines in the geopolitical situation is what happens next in the EU. And Brexit has kind of felt to be most people, by most people to be a done deal. But I think there are a lot of dangers in Brexit. A hard Brexit could still be disruptive. But I think that investors were lulled into a false sense of security last year by getting a pro-business president in France, Monsieur Macron. I think the Italian election result, that's a big economy, split between left and right wing populists with hardly any conventional politicians involved. That is one that could lead to very unpredictable impacts in terms of the geopolitical environment. So I think Europe is more of a fault line, more of a, more of a potential disruptor than perhaps its investors are factoring in. You mentioned Mr. Trump there. He does have an influence. It's been an extraordinary week with his meeting with North Korea. What do you think his long-term impact will be? Yeah, there's two agendas with the Trump administration. There are two very different agendas going on, I would suggest. One is the pro-business agenda, the tax code deregulation. Business likes that. It was going just fine. The second one is trade and disruption of trade. And we saw that... Uh, last week with the G7 meeting ending in a very ugly way. And uh, I suggest that if trade turns into a trade war, that becomes very problematic for business and markets. How would I parse it? I think it's 70-30. I think it's a 70% chance that the positive agenda, in spite of the noise, dominates. 30% chance we get into something bad geopolitically, which could be triggered by a trade war. Now, you mentioned regulation in our conversation earlier and that is some a minefield that this industry has been navigating its way through for about a decade really yes would you see europe and the us as leaders in that now and what does that bring as an opportunity well in some ways uh, europe and the us are going in opposite directions because europe is really regulating whereas the us preoccupation is to deregulate but i think that's more apparent than real and I'd point to something that I think is actually potentially quite optimistic. A lot of issues around compliance with MIFID. Uh, the industry's done it. It wasn't all that easy for everybody. But I think that the way that research is paid for through securities firms under MIFID, the, uh, the, the unbundling of trade commissions, the greater transparency, I think that's something that could catch on. I think that may become the global standard over the next five years. Even we are finding with large clients in other jurisdictions, even the United States, the clients are saying, we like MIFID, give us that sort of transparency. I think if that catches on, you will see a preference for benign regulation. And I think the MIFID rules on research could be a bit like USITS. USITS is popular globally. And that's not because it's unregulated, it's because the investor protection is well respected. You talked there about transparency on a slightly different note. ESG is a, is a big topic at this year's conference. And, yes. And transparency, if you like, for the, the end user, yep. the end customer. How much of an impact do you see that as having? And, and it, with a new generation of investors, is that even more the case? Yeah. Uh, yes and yes, a lot, and it will be more the case. And I think here is a very important case where the differences between the US and Europe have been overstated. The noise from the federal government in the US has been quite antagonistic to ESG, for example, pulling out of the Paris Accord. But at the state level, you see a very strong commitment, particularly from New York and California, to, to ESG, to environmental uh, issues. One of the things that intrigues me 
we're a real estate investor on pretty well a global basis. Uh, the environmental ish, um, sensitivity on real estate is very strong in the United States, and in some ways it leads Europe. So I think there's some interesting transatlantic lessons going to be learned here. You also mentioned in your first answer to me uh, tech, yes, AI, data. This is an area that your company mm -hmm. are in, they're fully embracing. So what do you hope it will bring and what do you think the opportunities are still? Yes. Um, in the first session on Monday, one of my comments was our ideal recruit used to be someone who could analyze a balance sheet. Now it's a data scientist, preferably speaking Mandarin. Um, that shows, that talent demand shows the change that we've seen in the industry. We've employed pretty well, um, um, pretty clued up data scientists now for well over a decade, whether it's behavioral finance or pure analysis of data. That has really morphed into use of machine learning, artificial intelligence. What I would see is a change in how research is done to use data much more systematically. I think that has enormous potential to improve the productivity of investment research and to make us better in analyzing investment opportunities. It started in equities. The best data, the only real data you could use a decade ago was for large cap equities, preferably in the US. It's now become more global and data is available on other markets. I think that's an enormous opportunity for us to improve both the effectiveness and the productivity of investment research. So that's very much at a business level. Do you think that those tech opportunities will also come to play with attracting new customers and having the interface with the customer that they expect now? Yes, they will. It's very hard to know exactly how that's going to play out. I, I would hesitate to make a, dog, a, a dogmatic forecast, but the ability to engage directly with the customer through, uh, through digital means is clearly going to be very powerful. Whether we continue with the traditional private bankers and other advisors, they get better at it and we need products that can work there, or whether we move more towards investment managers connecting directly with customers, I think that's an open issue. And I think that uh, there will be, as usual, somewhat of a Darwinian process and an evolution there. We're ready for both. We would actually, um, we, we look forward to the digital engagement with customers, whether it's us doing it or whether we're in partnership with private banks and investment uh, and uh, financial advisors. And a forum like this allows those conversations, ideas to be shared amongst co colleagues in a collaborative way too. Yeah, no, that's right. And, uh, you know, we're seeing practical examples of how to use those digital means to, to actually accomplish the mission of communicating better and more transparently with customers. I feel very positive that that is one of the good things going on in our industry. An optimistic note to end on. Thank you so much for joining us, Jim. Great to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Great to be here.